We did it! Hooray! It's over. All right, everybody, welcome to the final lecture of EC 2002. My name is Art Turlup. If you don't know that by now, I don't know. I don't I can't help you. All right. What are we going to do today? Well, we're going to talk about reflections and input impedance. Why do we care? Well, where we're going at the end of this is we're talking about the input impedance of a transmission line. OK, um, what we're trying to do is we talked about transmission lines a little bit last time and we talked about what happens over a little, you know, like a segment of that um, based on L and C that we, we derived for this. But more effectively, we would like to see some kind of expression that tells us exactly if I have, you know, some kind of arbitrary line here, what is Z in? And that's what we need to do. We have some kind of load at the end of this, too, by the way. So what is Zn? And this load is going to have its own little impedance as well. Um, and we're going to define that. But one of the important things to realize here is that there are reflections that occur in, in, the, in the transmission of something. And this all derives from the telegrapher's equations we did last time. Um, we didn't talk about this uh, at all last time, but this is the equation, if you happen to get there. Uh, for the lossy condition of Z0. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is going to help us deal with uh, some, trying to define some of those high frequency effects uh, that occur in, in a, you know, in transmission theory. So in an ideal generalized case, this is our expression that we have for the, um, for the voltage. And you, you should readily recognize this portion as a wave. Okay, by now, e to the j, anything with a t or z up there, any kind of variable is gonna gonna be something that's gonna have that. In the non-ideal case, um, we can model the decay with a decay factor up here, an exponential decay factor of uh, e to the minus b z. So the decay is with respect to how far down the line you are. It's it's not with respect to time, but rather it's a function of distance from the origin or from the source uh, that you're you're sending the signal from. And our equation for B is as follows. It's actually dependent on the frequency that you're sending down. So the higher the frequency, the faster this attenuation. So you can see here now that sending a high frequency signal very, very long distances over particular kinds of transmission lines can be kind of a pain in the ass. So what we need to do is come up with models for this so that we can account for it and figure out how to mitigate those things. We're not going to do as much of that today because that's the whole field of, you know, uh, electrical engineering, but, but you know, we'll take a crack at it. What the hey? Um, note that if uh, B is not equal to zero, then as C goes up, um, I'm sorry, C goes up with omega as well. So, but wait, that doesn't, that doesn't make much sense. What, what the heck does that even mean? Well, um, basically our, our wave velocity is not exactly uh, what you expect it to be. And I'll save that discussion for your field theory courses in the future. But um, suffice it to say, you can get some pretty interesting behaviors from um, things things that are referred to as dispersion. And so your, your wave mechanics actually become uh, kind of strange in that some things can exceed the speed of light, but not really. It's not actually anything real uh, exceeding it. But anyways, like I said, discussions and, and future things for another day for or for Star Trek, I guess. <laughs> Anywho. There are two waves that we care about uh, going through the system. And, and because we're dealing with this from a wave perspective, um, we want to think about this in, almost in, in, a, in a very physics-based mindset. Okay, so there's a wave going in. I have these two, two lines here. I have some kind of wave going in. I have some kind of reflection that's coming back too, right? And there can be all kinds of different things going on with between those two different waves, but it's reflecting off of that load coming back down the, down the track. And I, I have some kind of current going out, but it gets reflected and comes back and I have some kind of voltage, um, 
going uh, between these two here, and I have some kind of reflected voltage uh, that I have to deal with as well. And so that's what this is. This is a an incident wave voltage comprise or comprise of uh, incident wave comprised of voltage and current, and some kind of inf uh, reflected wave comprised of voltage and current as well, and it bounces off that load. Okay, so what what can we do with these? Well, we know that. Um, both of these loads, ex or excuse me, both of the waves that we have here exist right at the load, too. So we can actually define a voltage at the load and a current at the load. And we know that our voltages at the load are going to be additive and that the currents, because they're facing different directions from each other, are going to subtract from each other, okay? It should come as no surprise that there's a duality here between voltage and current again uh, for this model. And so when we model our... Uh, our load impedance, um, basically whatever's over here, ZL, we can define it in terms of the uh, the load voltage and the and the load um, uh, current. Okay, and this is going to form the basis for our whole analytical method today. So. Last important note here before we move on, the plus sign means it's the one that's incoming, coming down the positive z-axis. So the positive z-axis is defined, this is lowercase z, okay, so this is zl. The positive z-axis is defined as pointing towards the load, and the negative z-axis is pointing back towards the source, all right? All right, we need to define a thing real quick, like we've always done. Why we're defining things in the very last day of class is beyond me, but I didn't write this course. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's actually it's actually a very useful thing, and you're going to see it a lot, and if you may have seen it before, uh, as a matter of fact. So what is this thing? Well, this is actually just our, um, our reflection coefficient. Okay, well, that makes sense. We need some kind of coefficient that represents uh, what our reflection actually is. So we can write the reflection coefficient as the ratio of the output to the input in terms of voltage or current, and they should match up. And if you do a little bit of algebra, you're going to find that um, using these equations, that you come to an, an expression where this reflection coefficient is equal to these impedance values. We can use this reflection coefficient to define a ratio of standing waves. And so these two standing waves are the ones that are inbound and outbound, right? The incident and reflected wave, backward propagating wave, if you want to call it that. Um, and so S, standing for standing wave, <laughs> uh, is just... 1 plus gamma and 1 minus gamma. Noting here that this is a ratio. If this was equal to 1, let's say, if the reflection was equal to the transmission, well, what would happen? This would explode, right? Our standing wave would, would make no sense. Okay. So anyways, um, considering the sinusoid portion of our waves only as a function of position, what would that look like? Well, uh, let's see here. A sinusoid... Uh, is defined by e to the j whatever, and we have a, a frequency for this. It's it's a, a spatial frequency, right? This is our spatial frequency. We need a carrier variable, our z, to carry us down the axis. Um, then we consider the input impedance as seen at a voltage source located a distance l down the line. So if we let this be our, our waveform, we're going to look distance L down the line. Okay. Prior to the reflection, uh, re reflection inducing load. Okay. Noting that the impedance is a ratio of voltage to current. Okay. The, re the, the impedance is a ratio of voltage to current. So the incident voltage uh, can be taken then at, at this particular value to be just e to the j k l. And this looks really weird because all these letters are used for indices usually. 
uh, for running indexes, uh, indices. So yeah, this is a goofy equation, and I apologize for the poor, uh, <laughs> the poor uh, letters used here. It's it's not ideal, but oh well. Um, so it's propagated. K times L radians as a as a distance here. So incident voltage at load. And that's where the load is. So if our incident voltage at the load is proportionate to uh, whatever it is at some arbitrary distance down the line, uh, then we could say, well, the uh, reflected voltage should just be equal to uh, the reflection coefficient times that value. So let's go ahead and write that out here. So incident voltage at load is proportionate to uh, e to the minus j k l. And we don't really care what it is exactly because that proportion is all that we really care about. Um, and then the reflected voltage at load is just proportionate to uh, gamma times e to the, whoops, e to the minus j k l or whatever it was from the incident, right? That's just based on the definition of gamma, as a matter of fact. Um, and so when I look at this here, we can actually express gamma, by the way, as this quantity here, since it's a complex quantity. Okay, well, that's great and all. Um, what can I do with this in terms of VL? Okay, well, VL, then I can just write it as V plus E to the uh, JKL plus V minus E to the minus JKL. And I know that the relationship between these two guys, which is, by the way, V plus V minus, um, gives me this nice little uh, coefficient here. So I can re-express this as V plus times E to the JKL uh, plus this gamma E to the JKL. I'm sorry, minus JKL. It's going the opposite direction, right? I'm sorry about that. I missed my missed my sign there. This should be positive. We're good. Okay. So yeah, this is going back the other direction. And that's important to note. Okay. And the relationship here is important too between the plus and minus because um, as you may remember or recall... Um, this is starting to look like a form of a, of a sine or a cosine function directly. Okay, and then similarly, we can do the same thing for uh, for current, where we have IL is equal to I plus E to the JKL, and then it's going to be the difference between the two, just like we defined before, but it's also going to have that gamma factor in there, uh, for the rela relationship between I plus and I minus. And this, again, is going back the other direction, uh, so we account for that wave uh, like, like so. This is equal to I plus, factoring out E to the uh, JK stays in there, factoring out the I plus, and then the gamma goes along for the ride, E to the minus JKL. Noting here that the minus sign versus the plus sign is probably going to have an interesting role to play in our uh, subsequent equations, okay? Okay, now to derive our expression for the uh, input impedance, what we end up with is Zn uh, Z evaluated at Z is equal to minus L. Noting here that we're effectively looking at what's happening at the load, right? So we have to kind of backpedal. Um, but this is equal to the ratio of these two guys, um, which is just V plus times, what do we get? Uh, the plus here, E to the JKL plus gamma e to the minus jkl okay over i plus e to the jkl minus gamma e to the minus jkl 
okay? And then these guys you can rope up together and actually do a little eraser mechanics here uh, and just make this equal to Z naught, right? Our, our, our impedance there. Um, and from here, what it is, is it's just a little bit of a simplification game. So the algebra here gets a little bit hairy, so stick with me for a moment. We get some new space here to, to work with. Oops. And uh, here we are. Let's shrink this down a little bit. And we'll kind of zoom in just a bit over here. Okay, so what we need to do is we would ideally like to write this expression um, in a little bit more simplistic fashion. So what we're going to do is get rid of that gamma. So you may recall that that gamma was equal to um, this ratio here. I'm just going to write it over in purple. Uh, gamma was equal to ZL minus Z0 or Z, Z0 uh, over ZL plus Z0. And so if I was to div get rid of this denominator right here, right, I could multiply top and bottom by ZL plus Z0 and cancel out some part of this. Okay, so I have Z0. It's going to just hang out on the outside. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by uh, ZL uh, plus Z0, e to the JKL. And then what I have for the next part is... Actually, I would leave that off. Um, what I have for this part is plus, and it cancels with this part of the gamma, right? So I'm just left with ZL minus Z0, E to the minus JKL, over ZL plus Z0, E to the JKL, minus ZL minus Z0, E to the minus JKL. And then from here, what we get is we can do a little bit of um, Euler formula here to get the following expression. Z in is equal to Z naught times ZL plus Z naught cosine KL plus J sine KL plus ZL minus Z naught cosine KL uh, minus sine, oops, sine, let me erase this, sine KL. Okay, and then this is all going to get divided by something that's rather similar to it, ZL plus Z naught. Same thing down here, K. L plus J sine KL. And then a minus sign here. And then uh, cosine KL minus J. Oops. Did I miss my J here? I miss my J up here. J sine KL here. Okay. And we just do a little bit of uh, moving stuff around, and we end up with the following. Z in is equal to Z naught ZL plus J Z naught tan KL all over Z naught plus J Z L tan KL. And this equation will be very useful for you in the future and for solving any kind of uh, equations that we may throw at you for something like the final. So you'll be given, you know, all the variables except one and then asked for, to solve for the remaining one. Um, usually you'll be given the Z0, the ZL, the K, the L, or, you, or you'll give, be given something that gives you the capability to solve for K and L. Um, like, for example... Uh, let's say that I gave you Z0 is equal to 100 uh, ohms and ZL is equal to 200 ohms. And let's say that the uh, speed is equal to 10 to the 6th meters per second. 
and the uh, omega here was our, our frequency was equal to 10 the seventh uh, radians per second then z in at uh, l let's say we wanted to know um, the zl at l equal to uh, lambda over four lambda over two and at um, roughly zero okay let's say we had these these three for example sake for different distances we wanted to check out so first thing we want to do here example is uh, we want to solve for our k value right because we need the k in order to be able to do everything so the k is equal to 2 pi over lambda which is equal to omega over c which is equal to 10 to the seventh over 10 to the sixth so it's just equal to 10 so our wave number is 10 that's easy enough um, so our l uh, at l equal uh, lambda over four and this is typically how you're going to get problems like this right so we're asking what's happening um, at various wavelengths down the path okay and that's often an interesting question for us because where we place something with respect to that wavelength really matters in terms of the reflection uh, and the phases and, and things that we end up seeing in our um, in our solution okay so as we'll see so then this gives me a KL equal to uh, 2 pi over lambda times lambda over um, over 4, right? And so I'm just left with pi over 2 for my KL value. Um, at lambda equal, um, I'm sorry, at L equal lambda over 2, by the way, uh, KL is going to be equal to just pi. And at L equals 0, KL is just going to be equal to, well, you guessed it, 0. Okay, so using these three, I have the following. Um, at lambda equal pi over 4, oops, that's not a pi over 4. Okay, lambda equal L, excuse me, <laughs> L equal lambda over 4. There's too many letters floating around. Getting confused. All right, so Zn is going to be equal to 100 times 200 plus J100 tan of pi over 2. Recall we just solved the pi over 2 right here, so we just plug that in. Um, and then 100 plus J200 tan pi over 2. And this is exactly the kind of question I would ask you guys, okay? So you just need to know how to use the equations. It's not going to be anything fishy, nothing weird. Um, I'm, I'm not going to try to play gotcha games for the last lecture of the of the day here. So it would probably be a problem just like this on the final, all right? Okay, so there's that one. Uh, we reduce it. We end up with um, Zn is equal to... Uh, 100 squared over 200-ish, which is equal to uh, Z naught squared over ZL. Okay? And this is really what we care about here is trying to find the relationship here for our input um, input impedance. Okay? So this is a more useful quantity to us than, than just a raw number. But you can just also, you know, report the raw number. That's just fine. Um... So this is just equal to 50, by the way. Okay, so then if I look at the next one, right, at L equal uh, lambda over 2, a little bit further down, then I end up with uh, Zn is equal to, it's much the same here, uh, no real surprise. We end up with dot, 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 plug those into that equation right you're just plugging in a, a, a pi in here instead of a 2 pi that's it that's the only difference and that's going to give you something much larger that's going to give you 200 at the end of the day which is equal to your zl by the way so your input impedance in this case is actually equal to your zl all right and then at zero at l equals zero we have that Zn is equal to 
Um, well, it's 100 times 200 over 100, right? So these two cancel. It's just equal to ZL again. Okay. So effectively, our input impedance is equal to our load impedance for these two values here and here. Um, so that's, uh, that's nice. All right, and then in between, it actually is a little bit uh, smaller. So at L equals lambda over 4, we end up with uh, just a 50 for the input impedance. Okay, well, that should do it for the class, you guys. Um, thank you very much. That's all, folks. Um, as far as the final goes, I will probably do some more office hours and post on Piazza um, more in more detail exactly what you guys um, should be studying. I'll probably post something on Piazza, actually. We'll do it that way. Okay, everybody, it's all over, finally. Um, so if you have any questions about your, uh, your final grade, I hope to have them done by the end of... So we take the final on Wednesday, and then I hope to have them all graded by that Friday or Saturday and punch in final grades that same day if I can. Um, but as far as more specifically what's going to be on the final, I will uh, write something up on Piazza here within the next week or so. Uh, from the day of recording this. Um, <laughs> I know things have been completely out of sync. I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, I hope you've had fun. You know, most of all, I hope you've enjoyed the class. And for those of you that um, are a little on the fence, worried about whether or not you're going to pass, and, you know, some of you may not pass, uh, that's just how it goes sometimes, note that most of your peers in this class, or a good chunk of your peers in this class, not most of them, but a good chunk of them, probably about 20% or so, are actually retaking this class. Um, and I think a lot of those folks are, are going to go on to become, probably most of them, great engineers. Okay, So just because you don't get the grade does not make you a bad engineer. does not make you a bad student. As a matter of fact, um, failing and trying again and then succeeding makes you the best kind of student. Uh, as I've pointed out time and time again. I am very proud of the effort that you guys have put into this class. Um, I know we've had some academic dishonesty issues in this class and, uh, you know, you know, those people, you know who you are and I can't express how disappointed I am. But for those of you that have uh, plotted forward with integrity and honesty and most of all, a lot of hard work, um, I, I've been amazed at, at how, how diligent you've been and how much you've contributed with each other on on the forums and during office hours and things like that i've been extremely impressed with you guys as as students and as people uh, and i'd be proud to work with you in the future um so keep that in mind you know it's not about the letter grade i know that at the end of the day you're getting a degree and yes of course it's about the letter grade um but you'll find that those letter grades you know 10 years from now don't make a difference whether you got a B or a C or whether you had to retake the course or not. It sucked, but you know, you got over it. Um, but the kind of person you build yourself to be over these years in college is the most important thing that you will develop for your career. Um, the way in which you work, the kind of interactions that you have with other people and trying to solve difficult problems, how you overcome obstacles. Um, these are the things that matter. So, uh, keep that in mind as as grades come out, as you go through the final, do your best, try your hardest, work your ass off, and, and make me proud, okay? Um, but uh, I've, I've been really proud to teach this class, and it's been worth uh, spending my whole summer doing it, so, um, you know, all the fun stuff aside, you know, I like making the goofy videos, but, um, and uh, uh, if you see me around campus, um, mo more likely than not, uh, it'll be me playing the accordion by the fountain at some point in time here, probably in the spring after everything opens back up. Uh, I'll be uh, hunkering down here at my residence over the fall, just doing research. Uh, and then I'll probably pop 
pop my head out in the spring like a little a little gopher or something um but yeah my advisor is is leaving campus and he'll be long gone by then so i'll, I'll probably have a little bucket out there with some quarters in it from um piddly donations to keep me keep me going in the school <laughs> but uh no no i don't play well enough for that I, I think it's not even worth a not even worth a quarter unfortunately so we'll see how we how we progress in our accordion lessons but uh anyways we'll see you around campus and uh, if you have any questions or concerns as as usual please email me and if you have any specific questions related to material post them on piazza and we'll get them addressed before that final exam um yep that's it See you later, folks. That's all I got.